Well, a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you all. It's Christmas Day, and I haven't done this in a few years, so uh, we're going to make the Xmas Super Chocolate Pan Pie. And I'm telling you guys, this is one you're going to want to make. <laughs> this, this is really incredibly good. And uh, you can see it's got a pretty good array of ingredients in it. you got to have a stick of butter, a large box of Jello pudding chocolate, a instant pudding, and a small box of the vanilla, um, a package of Philadelphia cream cheese, some powdered sugar, some flour, some Cool Whip, and some crushed pecans. And uh, what we're doing is right now, we are, this is my, this is my system for it. Whenever I make my snowballs, I got to have, have, have a full cup of these. And it can't be, it's got to be pretty much dust. <laughs> and it releases those pecan oils in there. You can see how shiny it gets when you start crushing it. It's amazing how much oil are in these. But yeah, we go through and crush we zoom out a little, zoom out a little bit more there, and yeah, and the, I just use a good solid glass. It doesn't have too much of a ridge in it. Actually, the glass I've been using for years, my Scotch glass, is kind of a rounded. It uh, I broke it the other night, and uh, so yeah. But this is this is actually a better glass. It's got a thick a thicker bottom on it there, so it crushes them good. So yeah, so you go through and you crush. This is a half a cup of pecans that's going to be crushed up and added to one cup of flour and a stick of butter. And uh, that's going to get mixed thoroughly and then pressed into a uh, 9 by 13 baking pan. And then that's going to go in the oven for, uh, well, how is that, uh, 350 degrees for, let me see, what was it, 20 minutes? Yeah. It bakes for 20 minutes, then you cool it. I saw 20 and cool, and I thought, wait, yeah, 20 minutes to cool it. No, 20 minutes to cook <laughs> the crust, and uh, then let it cool, and then you're going to start layering your stuff on it. So we'll get through this part and move on. All right, so we add our, it says melted butter. This is very soft, so it is just short of being melted. <laughs> it's not liquid, but it is very soft and melted. So we add that, put in our pecans, one half a cup very well crushed pecans. And then start kind of putting in our flour. And yeah, I didn't use the knife to shave the top. It's not that exact on this. When I do my snowballs, I actually sift it because you don't want any any lumps or anything in there with that shortbread cookie. But and then it's a very dry dough. Like I said, it's just going to make a very thin coating at the bottom of the pan for the stuff to sit on. But it really makes a difference on how this stuff tastes. And as always, I go with my plastic wrap on this stuff. To, like I said, it's, there's not much of it to, to work with for a 
13 by 9 pan. It's very a very thin coating is all that's going down on this. All right, our oven is at 350. We will make sure we take off our cellophane. Just go ahead and pop that in the middle rack. Set the timer for 20 minutes. So our lovely base is cooked. You can see uh, 20 minutes. It seems like a long time for that thin crust, but it uh, it takes it and it doesn't, you know, it's... The oven seems to be working, holding temperature right. So now we've got a nice, it's a, kind of almost a crispy cookie crust quality to it that'll be as our base. So while we're waiting for that to uh, cool off, I thought, let's take a look at some of this beautiful gold that I have gotten this year. And uh, it is the gold, the Bayou Gold guy, right? So this is what I just finished off this weekend's show. This beautiful gold that I got from Carson Prospecting. And he sent me that beautiful specimen piece in there too with the gold that's in the rock. But just some beautiful pieces of gold. Thank you, Carson, so much. And I had my beautiful look at those. Those are from Gold Nugget Sales, his leaf gold. And just look at those beautiful pieces of gold. They don't weigh nearly what you think they would for their size, but just the the beautiful character on them. And like I said, just awesome pieces. And that's from Mike at Gold Nugget Sales. And then I picked up my new newest addition to the collectible gold that I got from Gold Bay. I'm not sure if this was the, the Eagle's Nest mine or the Mockingbird mine, but this is crystallized gold, $150 a gram. Three times the, three times the cost of regular gold, <laughs> but the character and quality of it is just incredible and there's a there is a specimen piece that came you can see that gold coming out of that white quartz just incredible stuff so yeah it's been it's been a wonderful you look at that look how it, the light facets the facets on that so yeah that is that's what it's all about right there is that beautiful beautiful gold my friends man i ended up having to <laughs> sit there and look at that gold for a while <laughs> once we had it out uh, it's just too beautiful so this step we need to get our base down now so we are going to mix our let's see here it's going to call for one cup of powdered sugar confectioner's sugar yes powdered sugar and you can get this in like the super fine that's what i usually like to get is where it's the 10 times powdered but you're limited to what you can get in the stores these days and they did not have it so there's a good good cup of powdered sugar going in there next we add Again, I prefer to buy the extra creamy Cool Whip, but that was not an option. So I took what they had, which was Cool Whip, which is fine. But again, just that's just the, the way things are right now. Just normal stuff that you take for granted that you can have a selection on. <laughs> you, you, you take what, what's there, you know, it's, it's crazy. So there we've got us a cup of Cool Whip.
Lovely. I remember when this stuff came out as a kid. Before that, it was only the whipped cream in the can. And I wasn't a big fan. <laughs> I liked the I liked my canned whipped cream. But as time rolled on, accepted the the cool whip. And then last but not least, because this is the kicker for this thing. Again, I very rarely, actually I never buy cream cheese for anything except for making this recipe. So I'm reading the instructions on how to open it to the seam. I'm sure, let's fast forward through this part. I'm learning how to do that now on my phone, <laughs> on my editing. All right, we've got a, a very thorough creamy whip on that. Now that our crust is cooled, we will add that on there and work on the next level. Actually, I meant to say, we'll, <laughs> we'll get the other next level done. We're not going to put this on until it's all ready to go at the same time. So, um, And my crust is still not quite cold it's got a little bit of warmth to it so but you can see that cream cheese makes that and the sugar and that cream uh makes it almost like a thick a thick icing and a very it's a very sweet sweet and tangy kind of sweetness with that cheese and the cool whip so and the and the powdered sugar so now yeah, it's like i said it's really and uh that's amazing how how good that crust smells when it's baking in the oven when uh all it is is, you know, flour and butter and pecans. So, all right, let's get the other ready. Ready to go into our last phase of the mixing. But before that, <laughs> I yesterday for Christmas Eve, I saw my neighbor next door, my new neighbor. She, uh, she's one that y'all saw the Thanksgiving video. She brought me over all the food for Thanksgiving. Well, she brought, she gave me this. She goes, wait a second, do you, do you drink? And I said, yeah, I have, I, I have a sip from time to time. And uh, she goes, well, here, let me get this. And uh, you can see it separated in there. She goes, make sure you shake it up before you drink it. And it's called Coquito. It looks like we got some. And it is a, uh, it's one of her traditional Christmas drinks that she makes. And uh, it is rum based. <laughs> It has a lot, it has the coconut cream in it, uh, condensed milk. Oh, look, it's even got a, we got some, uh, I think we might need to push that down and and mix a little bit more in there where it's kind of frosted. It's almost like frosted on there. I wonder if that was something I should be, that might've been the kicker of the drink. You take, you get that off the top. Mmm. The knife, <laughs> the knife tasted pretty good. Nice. I like those bottles, man. That is pretty cool. I will definitely be giving her bottle back to her. That's the key. Whenever people give you stuff, baked goods, anything, I don't care if it's even in a, a butter dish, I give it back to them. <laughs> Here you go. I'll take a refill on that, please. Thank you. So, all right. There. But she will be getting a, a large slice of the supreme Christmas chocolate pie here for sure. So. All right. Well, let's uh, let's just see what they've. Boy, that is a thick. <laughs> Feels like I should be adding some adding some rum to that myself. That is a thick drink. I may I may have this may be more like a a liqueur type drink where you take a little. I don't know, man. If it's rum, you you tip that you you slam that rum. I do to, to a degree. Nah. All right. Well, well. Merry Christmas. Cheers to you. Uh, my Christmas gift for the neighbor, Cosit Cochita, Cochita. cinnamon there's a hint of cinnamon to it yeah definitely it's not a pina colada it has and it's not that strong of a coconut flavor to it either it, it's subtle mostly it's the creaminess and 
and you can taste that red. It's pretty strong. <laughs> you can you can definitely taste the underlying rum. I think it would probably do it well for me at least to throw in a few ice cubes to give it a chance to dilute it down a little bit. Man, that is, you can see how that pours out. That is crazy. But uh yeah, I'd say and actually, like I said, it's it's just in my nature. Anything anything I ever have, it's always we always gotta, yeah, you know. They call that land yap down here whenever you add get a little something extra there on top of it. Just to be nice to this drink, we added a little bit of rum to it. Can't taste the difference at all. It's it's uh I think it was already pretty strong. It just see it's so thick, it seems like it could take a a little watering down. But uh yeah, very, very cool. Thank you, my dear neighbor next door. So like I said, our stuff is in there in the refrigerator, cooling, staying cool. This is where we add our puddings and mix them up together. Probably a, uh, now, now I got a bowl that's really larger than I need. I don't know if y'all, I was, I, I, I didn't have much going on this morning. I was up early with the little kids, the kitties, and they're playing with their their new tube that they love very much. <laughs> and uh, I say a large box of the chocolate instant and the small box of the vanilla instant. They didn't have vanilla. I had to go with French vanilla, but I think we still have the, the essence. Again, man, it's just crazy. You have to take what they give you. So literally this is, this is Eurasian, uh, Russian <laughs> sparse, you know, I mean, like I said, yeah, we've got it, but not what you want. You know, what's, what are you bitching about? You can still get it. Yeah. But in America, we're used to having choices and why are we losing that? And I think we know why. So, but yeah, I was watching the NASA's, uh, capsule returning from the moon and splashdown today that's very awesome came in at I remember it was right around 11 three cups of usually usually they would take all this pudding would take like yeah three cups of milk for this one this one by itself calls for does it have instructions on it that's oh, been so long. three i think it's three cups of milk just to make one and make make the large ones so it's going to be a much denser pudding as well in this. But yeah, it was pretty cool watching it splash down, shoots, shoots open up and went off without a hitch. You guys that have watched me cook stuff before, baked stuff, you know this, or make drinks, this is where I would normally throw in my Adam's Best Vanilla to whatever recipe I'm making. But this stuff is so good, I don't even, I don't even, I don't touch it. I do it just like, just like my friend. Actually, I got this back in, uh, when was this? 1998. And, uh, and I, and I, and I got back in touch with her years later, actually, in, uh, in 2018, whenever I actually recovered this and got to have it again. <laughs> so it was a long time in between. And then I've only made it a couple of times since then. So like I said, every few years at Christmas, I'll make it up. So, all right. So we have our crust. All right, so this is where we put down our base.
a little Cochita cheers. Yeah. Icing it down helped a bit. Boy, I can hear the, they've been blowing off the, the fireworks already. Some big, some big boomers going off. <clears throat> All right, now we go with our pudding, which is, uh, it's with that little bit of milk, it's already starting to set up. Almost probably, I probably wasted a little more time. Should have done this a little quicker. You just want to use a very light touch when you're when you're doing this. Oh, I hear my little girl outside chirping. She's been out there chasing off the coons again, I guess. She's a little spitfire. She made it through the freezing cold weather out here very very nicely she's got a nice thick coat on but she i had the dryer running for the last three nights all night and she's staying under the house so i'm pretty sure that that helped cut the chill for her i had a little bed out there but that's a then they can actually climb into you know it's like a a box of foam you know, soft but yeah she didn't want anything to do with that but like I said, she made it, she made it over, made it through the, the cold period. So hopefully we won't have any more of that nonsense, 23 degrees. <laughs> so there we've got our, our next layer done. And then we wrap it off with our remaining Cool Whip. So we spread an even coat of the rest of our Cool Whip on. Try to make it look nice. The recipe calls to add chocolate sprinkles. I've never been a chocolate sprinkles fan. So I take some Toll House chips and the fine grater. It's already chocolatey enough. It just adds a little, little accent character to it on the top. <laughs> and uh, dresses it up. So there, we're ready to go. We're going to pop it in the refrigerator to set. Get that one chip off of there, yeah. And uh, we'll have us a piece of super duper Christmas chocolate pie. Well, I think we've had sufficient time to chill. So let's check out our pie. There's a cut there. It's always hardest to get this stuff out. The first one. That looks like that's coming out pretty well. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And as you can see, our nice layering on our inside our crust our cream cheese layer our pudding and then our whipped cream i don't think we could ask for better than that let's find a fork here and let's that looks pretty good very very crispy crust Mm. <laughs> yeah. That is a very unusual 
and chocolatey. Not overly sweet, but a very, a very good Christmas pie. Mm. <laughs> All right. I'm going to eat the rest of that and leave you guys to get started on your own. And thank you again for joining me on this Christmas Day um, treat. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and a happy, very happy New Year coming up. And we'll see you the next time around, my friends.